Welcome in to the KSO Show. I am Mason Voth, joined by Derek Young as we start another week of hecticness in K-State athletics. Uh, hopefully this week will be a little bit more calm than what we experienced last week uh, because last week it had a lot of stuff that did not impact at least directly what was going to take place on the field or on the court. It was Colin Klein leaving. It was Naquan Tomlin's situation. That is all in the rearview mirror, at least to some extent, and now we can focus on the stuff that actually matters. Hey, who's going to be playing games and impacting K-State on the field and on the court? And uh, that's what this is kind of all about right here. The transfer portal, it's still, I mean, we're, we still have more than halfway to go uh, before that thing closes this session. And obviously, K-State has already lost quite a bit in the portal, and they're hoping to not lose any significant pieces to the puzzle. Um, obviously, there are some that are in there that hurts, but ultimately nothing that they can't overcome, and you hope that it remains that way. So uh, let's let's talk about the transfer portal right now, and I guess we can start with the positive, and that's the fact that K-State has their first addition from the uh, transfer portal that finally came in. Uh, that would be Easton Kilty from North Dakota, that came in. So uh, what's the book on uh, K-State's edition in the transfer portal? Yeah, it, you know, depending on the, the service that you look at, right, because they're all going to fluctuate just a little bit when it comes to tra transfer portal rankings, which are, I think, by nature, a little volatile and probably not as trustworthy as what you get with high school rankings just because it is newer and – it's not like you've seen these kids multiple times at combines and stuff. In some cases, you're evaluating a kid that might have been on, like, for example, think about some of these Power 5 transfers. They're, they're, they're leaving those Power 5 schools probably because they haven't played. That That's a tough eval. So some of these are uh, less trustworthy because of that. It becomes a little bit tougher to do. But with Easton Kilty, what you do like is that there is three or four years of film that you can evaluate and people like what they see. Um, an all-conference all player, a three-year starter, uh, a guy that can play tackle and guard. So really, you're checking off a lot of boxes here if you're Kansas State. I asked Drew the same question earlier, and I know that obviously there's a, a ways out, and this is all ultimately probably going to depend on – the circumstances of the other offensive linemen around him. But as of this point in time, where would you expect Easton Kilty to be on K-State's offensive line come game one next season? That's anyone's guess, right? That that you asked me that for a you know for for a point, right? And you're making that point because that versatility he has kind of calls that into question, but also which guys are going to solidify spots? You'd, you'd like to think that Hadley Panzer and maybe Taylor Portier have a spot. Maybe Carver Wills has a spot. Uh, so then is the center job open? Is the, That's the one spot that Easton Kilty has not played. So maybe we should be comfortable in saying that he won't be the center. Uh, and all other four positions he played while at North Dakota. Now, looking at this logically, he can't be a center. You got two potential guards already known to be coming back in Adley Panther and Taylor Portier. Carver Wills just played a bunch of right tackle this year. So maybe it is left tackle by process of elimination if you look at it that way. I just don't think it's that cut and dry. As for what K State has lost, and look, the, the, the Kilty edition should not be overshadowed in any way because it is significant. And, you know, kind of what I, I talked about with Drew is it's like a lot of these guys everybody can get caught up in, you know, what is, what is this guy's rating or whatever. Also look at the offers and Easton Kilty just stacked them up from all over very respected programs and, and significant places. And he chose K state and also, I mean, kind of low key in the way that it goes down for him because uh, he didn't even post the K state offer on Twitter. And then he's not posting that he's committed on Twitter. He does it on Instagram, which threw me for a giant loop uh, yesterday, which I guess just proves that I'm, I'm, I'm old because the Instagram thing had me off my game. Uh, but that's a big ad for the Wildcats as they're trying to replace 15 players that they've currently lost in the portal. And 12 of those 15 were members of the Big 12 title team last season. How would you summarize what K-State has lost so far in the transfer portal? Because I 
have looked at this, you know, over the years that the portal has been a thing for K-State in both basketball and football, I don't think that they've ever been hurt in a major way by what they've lost to the portal. Most of the guys, it's like, I can explain that or that's not going to impact me or hurt me one way or the other. Feels like this year may be slightly different. There are a couple of guys that you go, man, would have been nice to keep them around. But as you distance yourself further from it, you realize you can't, you know, it's not anything you can't overcome. So how would you put into words what K-State has lost in the portal this year? Technically, lost a lot of production. Um, a few starters probably um, for the first time and maybe at least in this quantity. So on the surface, it looks like they're losing quite a bit of substance and production. All can be explained away a little bit. So I will say that they are taking a hit, but and, and it would be naive to say that they aren't, but at the same time, it's probably not as significant as it appears on the surface, if that makes sense. You lose Will Lee, and he was getting starter snaps, and he was probably, from a talent standpoint, their best cornerback, and I don't think anyone would object to that. Um. And that's why he's going to Texas A&M, of course. But Jacob Parrish got starter quantity of snaps, too. So did Keenan Garber. And then you call into the other stuff that has been in question there. Nate Matlack, a lot of production there, a lot of snaps there that you were losing to the transfer portal. At the same time, he didn't start. So you got you got to you're but they could lose all four of their top defense events. So it doesn't matter because Khalid Duke's gone. Brendan Brendan Mott, we'll see what happens. Might be gone. Nate Matlack gone. Cody Stuffel being gone. So that's really just you're losing your top four defense events. Um, regardless of how it happens, you are. Uh, Treshawn Ward, DJ Gins probably was better, but that's a lot of production. So that's how you qualify that. Now you're losing a lot of production, but DJ Giddens was probably better. Will Howard, you're losing a lot of production. You're your career touchdown leader at school, but it was time to turn to page Davey Johnson. So I get that there's a lot of cases here that make you grimace a little bit, but they can all be explained away, at least to an extent. The one that probably can't as much is Kobe Savage. Definite starter, definite production. Um, and, and there's, you know, not the other part there. So I wouldn't say that you're undergoing a travesty, but you are losing a solid chunk of production. But my argument would be, um, there's good reasons like the Avery Johnson, Will Howard thing, but there's also not impossible to kind of match that caliber of play probably that you can also because if Easton Kilty is any kind of uh, example of things to come then I think they're going to be fine yeah and I I, the way I look at it I mean if you're you're watching on the YouTube there are all the the transfers uh, in and out for K-State right now but if you you go down that list and look like Treshawn Ward as you were saying like yeah there's good production there I liked what Treshawn Ward brought to K-State but you have DJ Giddens, and DJ Giddens had clearly proven to be the better running back, at least for what K-State wanted, but the better running back. The Will Howard thing, guy gave his four years to K-State, played some good football over the last two, and obviously you have Avery Johnson waiting in the wing. So while you lose a ton of production at that spot, you don't feel like it's a major drop-off. You understand it. And then you go down the list, Will Lee, Obviously, there is talent there, and it it is there. But as we have seen on social media uh, the last couple of days, even if it's not to Will Lee's doing, there's probably uh, some good reason and and K State being okay with him going away. And I mean, like the the lasting image of that you know super boost Iowa State shove that he gave, it's not a great one. Uh, and so I, I don't think people are too beat up about that. And then you keep going around like. Nate Matlack, to what you were saying, it's yeah, he he wasn't even really a starter, but it would have been nice to have had him. Um, it just it, it wasn't going to work out. And then Kobe Savage, that's probably the most significant one in my eyes, just from the standpoint of 
obviously what Kobe Savage has done on the field the last two years for K-State. But I also think that you lose kind of um, an emotional leader type player in that spot. And that would be helpful to have next year because I look around at next year's defense and it's just not going to be many guys that are used to being in that role of having to be a leader. Most of them are still going to be pretty young next season if you look around at it. And that's where uh, K-State getting a significant transfer or two on the defensive side of the ball that could immediately come in and step in not and lead not just by their play, but also you know their vocalness and their experience. I think that would be significantly helpful. Especially on the defensive line, as I alluded to, they're yeah. going to lose their top four guys there. But from a leadership and veteran experience standpoint, I think you kind of like look at what they have coming back and you're like, it's probably going to need to be Uso Sayamalo. It's probably going to yeah. need to be Austin Moore. It's probably going to need to be Keenan Garber. It's probably going to need to be Marquis Siegel. Which is crazy to ask of Keenan Garber because based on his actual experience at the position he's at, he's he's like a sophomore right now, basically, or a redshirt freshman kind of. Uh, yeah. Because of switching over from receiver, it helps though that he's been in the program for a while and obviously uh, he'll, he'll want to keep expectations up. But Interesting to see how it's all gone down for K-State. And again, you know, these landing spots will be uh, fascinating to follow as well. And I think it's it's not an excuse, but I will say it's important to point out. And not to say that means it's okay. So I just want to preface that. But Will Howard, if if he actually picks a school and does this, it's a COVID year. It's yeah. It's an extra year. It's not. It's and the same thing is the case for Trayshawn Ward and Kobe Savage. In normal situations, those three would have zero eligibility remaining. Yeah, and that 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 to me is like the number one thing with like the Will Howard stuff. It's like that that guy he, he gave four years. He played a full college career here. Like, w- w- doesn't matter where he goes or what happens next. Like, that's that that is a dude that that's a cat and. Yeah, I think that's a good thing to point out because I, I I share the same sentiment. Now, again, some of these guys, it's not like they've been at K-State for four years, so it's not the, quite the same, but these guys have played a typical full college career now, and they're just utilizing the extra benefit. And the whole point of the COVID year thing was to provide guys an opportunity that may have been taken away from them or give them an opportunity to do something um you know, it's progressive with their career that that COVID or something else may have hampered. And that's what these guys feel like they are doing is putting themselves in a position to succeed more. And I, I don't know that outside of the Will Lee transfer, I don't think any of it's a slight to K-State. I don't think uh, that any of these guys hold ill will towards K-State. It's just they look around and they see, okay, my my better opportunity is going to come somewhere else. And I think ultimately I'll flash the names back up on the screen for those watching on the YouTube. But if you go down that list, um, that just goes to the point of there aren't many guys on there that you would say, yeah, I'll I'll take you back and I can give you your best opportunity at K-State right now. Like Jake Rubley's committed to Illinois State. Like he's probably going to go and have a great career at at Illinois State. That's probably a great spot. Honestly, he he might be better than what Illinois State would be used to. Same thing for Jordan Wright. Like, he did some things on special teams, but he wasn't ever really going to significantly contribute as a defensive back on the field. He goes to UConn. I'm sure he can go and, and have a good time at, at, at Connecticut. So, like, I, I think most of these guys are putting themselves in a position to be better, and K-State just wasn't going to be able to offer that, and nobody should be too worried or freaking out about it. Um, I, the only time that I really have – you know, sound the alarm type panic for the portal is when you're losing a guy or multiple guys that are legitimate players. And seemingly the only reason that they are leaving is because your program's in disarray or whatever. Like if it's not explainable, then that that's okay to freak out. Like Nigel pack is probably the closest thing to that, that K state has had. But at the end of the day, like there was a coaching change. He had been here for two years. The team had been dog crap. Like, I don't blame Nigel Pack for transferring last year. Would he have benefited from sticking around? Maybe, who knows, but it worked out well for him at Miami. He was a starter on a Final Four team. Like yeah. he, It worked out for both parties last year, and I will still contend, honestly, that in hindsight, Nigel Pack moving on was probably the best thing for Marquise Noel and K-State because I don't think Marquise Noel is that version that he was last year if Nigel Pack is still in Manhattan. 
And Marquise Noel, by the end of his career, was a better college basketball player than Nigel Pack, even though Nigel Pack is still really good. I agree. Yep. So, all right. Well, that is uh, the transfer portal for the Wildcats. We expect more additions in the near future. And uh, we'll see. Are you worried about anybody else leaving, or is this going to get capped off at 15? Well, there could be a stray here or there. Uh, nothing that I would call a shocking development at this point. Like I mentioned, like I think the Brennan Mott situation is still in, in, in flux and in limbo as well. Um, and in terms of you know the potential ads, and they're, they just hosted three official visitors last week, going to host at least – five this weekend so we got what we got recruiting scoop we got yeah the visitor scoop we got commit watch we got a transfer big board so get to k-state online uh sign up try it out uh it's a good time where is your avery johnson transfer panic meter at right now on a scale of one to ten uh one being you're not scared yeah one being you're not scared ten he's gone i'm gonna melt down it's like a 1.5 like okay. cuz you know you're going to you know you're going to have them for the bowl game so you got to get through that yeah. period and assess at that point yeah i i would say i would put it at 3 but only because i'm you know skittish and i don't want uh i don't want anything bad to happen to k state um like that but i, I will say g- positive news last night is that the way i found out Easton Kilty committed was by Avery Johnson's instagram and him sharing uh the post and everything so I, I and, and, people and don't really have anything to worry about it. Avery and Johnson Avery is Johnson. locked in. Yeah, and his mom was thrilled. So, yeah, everything sounds good. Yep, just go and, ahead. And, and, get... and the reaction there tells me that Avery was probably very pivotal in the decision or was very included and invested in that recruitment. Yep, just go just go and get the man, an offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach now and uh, put this matter to bed, and then everybody can watch him ball out and eat some Pop-Tarts in Orlando at the end of the month. So, uh, we will we'll be there for that Pop Tarts Bowl, sixteen days away. Uh, the first bowl games of the year get started four days from now uh, on Saturday, so we've got that to look forward to. Big Twelve playing on Saturday. Texas Tech will face Cal in the Independence Bowl down in Shreveport, and uh, we'll talk more about K State's bowl game and some of the others later this week on the KSO Show. We've got a full week of coverage coming for you here on the K State Online YouTube page and podcast platforms. Today, obviously, talking transfer portal. Tomorrow, we'll talk basketball. Thursday, back on to uh, discussing football and uh, the matchup with NC State and some other things. And then Friday, we'll preview the basketball matchup with Nebraska's Fred Hoiberg and the Cornhuskers. Come to Manhattan on Sunday, and uh, then we'll be getting closer and closer. I guess uh, you know Christmas will be coming up and the bowl game. A lot of fun times. And also, I would say, uh, if you have a K-State fan in your life, and you really love them, and you're like, man, they're awesome, but they're wildly misinformed, and they love to spit out just terrible takes that are wildly uh, off base at family get-togethers, get them a KSO membership this year. That would be a great Christmas gift to the K-State fan in your life. Um, I Honestly, just give them your credit card if you want and say, hey, this is for – KSO, but if you want to use it on other things, you can be generous and give it to them too. But uh, get over to K-State Online, at On3. A lot of coverage with recruiting, the team, and anything and everything in between because we know that uh, there's been a lot more than just on-court and on-field type stuff that's been discussed in the last week, and it's nice to be winding down from that. So for Derek Young, I am Mason Voth. Thank you for watching and listening to the KSO Show.